pulled out my Bible and I began to uh, just kind of focus on the Lord for a little bit, Brother Pete. Uh, if it's been a long time since you've done that, uh, Brother Derek, I just showed up at Denny's and I, I sat down and I had nothing to do, nothing on my mind. I just cleared it all out. And Brother Chris, I just, I just started rummaging through the Bible. I know that doesn't sound incredibly respectful, you know, because you don't rummage through the Bible, but that's sort of what I did. I just kind of just started meandering through the Bible. And uh, as I sat there, I ended up getting three or four different messages to preach, and I really didn't even want to leave, but uh, next time I may not. I've, I have a goal someday. Uh, not sure if I'm ever going to be able to pull it off, but I, I want to go into a buffet when it opens at 11, and I want to take my books, and I want to eat the first wave, and I want to sit there and read until it's time to eat the next wave. Y'all pray for me that I'll find the strength to get that done. Uh, <laughs> I just have always wondered why folks don't do that sometimes. But anyhow, I, I, I came across this, uh, this passage that I'm going to be sharing with you this morning, which is the, the, main, the main thought of what I want to share with us. And uh, uh, I did not realize, I did not realize uh, the magnitude of what it was going to say to me, uh, Brother David, until I went to Louisiana. And, and came home. This is Labor Day weekend. Labor Day is the first Monday in September. It's a creation of and by the labor movement and is dedicated to the social and economic achievements of American workers. It constitutes a yearly tribute, one day off a year, to the contributions workers have made to the strength prosperity and well-being of our country now this is not going to be a political message and regardless of one's opinion about organized labor and I do understand that those opinions are wide varied and very passionate regardless of your opinion about organized labor we cannot disregard that it is built upon the power of together Everybody say together. Yeah. Established on the principle that an organized, unified body is a force that cannot be ignored. Even the Lord recognized that. Because at Babel, he confounded the languages. He, he caused them not to be able to communicate with one another in order to dispel the notion that any particular unified body could, could uh, circumvent the power of God. And, and God himself said, I better do something because when people are unified, there's no stopping them. The role of unity in the church is that together... Everybody say together. Yeah. We might change the world. And it has never been more evident to me in light of what was accomplished this weekend. I didn't even comprehend it. I didn't even realize it until I was in my office this morning preparing to study. And those <coughs> that we were fortunate enough to connect with and help with, it was much needed and appreciated. But there was a greater accomplishment that was attained. The evidence and power and the spiritual approval that is manifested when we come together, everybody say together, with a purpose. When we come together with a purpose. Acts chapter 14 and verse number 1. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude both of the Jews 
and also of the Greeks believed. This is Paul and Barnabas. They went in both together. And they preached or spake together so that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It says in Romans chapter number 10, how shall they hear without a preacher? And the Bible says, I believe in the book of Corinthians, 1st or 2nd Corinthians, that the Lord chose to save folks by the foolishness of preaching. We cannot, will not, and God willing never will get to the place where the preaching of the word becomes inconsequential because it is the preaching of the word that fosters faith when you hear the word of God it gives birth to faith uh, which allows you to invade your purpose it allows you to begin to, to go forward and move in what God has for you to do as you hear the word of God it gives birth to faith and if you will grasp a hold of the word of God it's going to give birth to faith uh, that is going to blow your mind it's going to give birth to faith that is going to allow us uh, together to do things that we didn't even dream of doing Ecclesiastes 4 and 7 then I returned <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you flat out. The devil ain't your friend. The devil is a chump. The devil is a punk. The devil is a sissy. He was kicked out of heaven. And he's trying to destroy folks. And we cannot just lay down idly and let it happen. We've got to stand up and go stand upon the word of God. And realize uh, if you go to hell it's going to be over my dead body. Huh? Then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun. Vanity. The description of vanity from the perspective of the preacher of Ecclesiastes, who most scholars would agree was Solomon who by the admission of the Lord God Almighty was the wisest man that ever lived, said, I saw vanity under the sun. Verse number 8 tells what that vanity is. There is one alone, and there is not a second. <laughs> How is it in this day that as we have become, Brother McKinney, the coming of the Lord has become so clear to us. The signs of the times are being fulfilled virtually every day. You listen or watch or, or catch up with the news or the world events, things going on in the world. We are so close to the coming of the Lord. The scriptures reminded us in Matthew 24 and elsewhere of the, of the way people were going to be in the last days and it's all around us. The coming of the Lord is so, so imminent. But yet, we have never, and I, I'm not going to pre-preach a message I preached a few weeks ago, but we have never been more isolated than we are today. If you'll remember, I used the analogy, we have relegated our relationships to how many friends we have on Facebook. And i got to let you know, if you have Facebook and you go home and you go through that list, you're going to find more than one person that is your friend that you don't even know. Huh? That you don't even know. But you'll, you'll say, I've got a thousand or two thousand or three thousand friends. But the truth of the matter is, how many true friends do we have? <laughs> And it is vanity. I talked to someone recently and, and, and it's, it's been a, a constant refrain that when somebody is faced with a struggle, it just seems like it comes bursting forth out of them. I don't need anybody. I can take care of it by myself. And I come to tell you this morning that that is a trick of hell. That is a deceivableness of the enemy that's trying to tell you that you don't need anybody else. The Bible says it is vanity. It is emptiness. It is nothingness. You're not going to make it by yourself. 
there's not a second. Yea, he had neither child nor brother. Yet is there no end of all his labor. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, for whom do I labor and bereave my soul of good. This is also vanity. And yea, it is a sore travail. It is working and striving and pressing and clawing and scratching for nothing. Verse number 9 says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Let me think just a minute. I have yet, I have yet to experience the company of a loner that didn't have some sort of a spiritual issue. People that isolate themselves and it has become more and more evident and more and more prevalent. I prayed the other day that we need a baptism of trust where we trust one another because primarily people that isolate themselves don't trust anybody. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. I've preached this before. It always amazes me. Brother David, there is an opponent. And the Bible says there are two that withstand him. But yet it also describes it as a threefold cord. How is it, Brother Billy, that the fulfillment of the New Testament, he said, where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst of them. If two or three agree touching any one thing, it shall be done. The threefold cord arises when two people come together with the purpose given by God and his seal of affirmation is put on it. Started a little slow. But let me share with you where I'm, where I'm headed and where I'm feeling this morning. I sat in my office I'm going to make myself just a touch vulnerable this morning, but I, I think I need to for you to experience and grasp what I'm trying to say this morning. I sat in my office this morning. Don't say this to brag. Don't want you to feel sorry for me. It is part of the reason why I called Brother Damesworth to come preach. I, I got into bed at 3 o'clock this morning. I set my alarm for 7.30 because I, I was going to get 30 more minutes sleep. I normally get up at 7. I'm trying to be at church by 7.30. I laid in the bed, Brother Billy, and I laughed. Okay, I'm not laughing at God. I was laughing because of God. Because guess what time I woke up? 6.41. <laughs> time to get up and be here normal time and I rolled over and I laughed okay because it was just funny and usually when something's funny you laugh because I had a plan but nevertheless I came in this morning and I, I began to study and I prayed first and I began to study and then my eyes got so heavy that I decided I really needed to study in my recliner I think that was spiritual too. <laughs> so I sat there and it was 8.12. And I said, I'm going to lay my head back for eight minutes. Didn't make it first off. 
But I laid my head back and I shut my eyes. And it wasn't a minute or two I started thinking stupid. Does anybody else ever do that? God, where in the world did that come from? I just thinking stupid. Tired, wore out. And I'm just thinking. And then I realized something, Brother Billy. God is my witness. What I'm about to tell you is true. I realized something. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I did not think one stupid thing while I was gone. And I'm about to tell you why that I couldn't lay there no longer. I had to sit up and start because... The Lord led me to the Word and the, the Lord impressed me. Why is that? I was I mean, I was at church. I'll tell you something pretty cool. Brother Ray, probably the most spiritual person in this whole room. He never left the church for over 24 hours. He never saw daylight till Friday sometime. Wasn't all working either. But it wasn't because we were in rip roaring services. It wasn't because I was reading my Bible because I tried one time and I just didn't have time. You know, and I prayed while I was getting ready to work in the mornings. And it wasn't because it was so super spiritual. So I started thinking, Lord, why is it that the whole time, not one argument, not one fuss, not nothing went wrong until the very end. And it wasn't even as bad as what we thought it was on the trailer as we're leaving. It was great. There was no disagreements. There was, it was just smooth. And you know what I realized? The devil ain't messing with a group of people that come together with purpose. You got to understand how powerful that is. When you're off by yourself, I don't care how spiritual you are, it is an opportunity for the devil to come and get you because you got nobody to help you. But when you're joined arm to arm and shoulder to shoulder with some people that got purpose and the hand of God is upon it, the devil ain't messing with you. That's why you cannot, you cannot be so arrogant and so cocky that you think you don't need nobody else. I say, well, I don't know about that. I do know about that. I do know that we started off measuring and nothing fell out. And Brother Billy, I started shaking because I thought we've done all come down here together and it's going to all be a big mess up. That was the only time the devil tried to mess with me, Brother Justin, because I started walking to the back of that, and I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we came because you led us to come, and I pray that your hand is upon everything we do. And the next thing you know, we're blowing and going, and everything's falling out just right, and the people are so happy that when we left, they started crying, and I did not battle one trick of the enemy. Think, think about it, fellas. Think about it. Huh? It's the power of together. But there's vanity. And you're deceived in thinking that you're better off alone. We're not talking about the, the, the things that might automatically jump into your mind. We're talking about spiritual things. And I recognize that there are things that we deal with when we're by ourselves that are never an issue when we're together. When you manifest inconvenience, expense, and sacrifice of time, effort, and other endeavors, it is all evidence of a commitment. That builds a sanctuary, not a building. Not a building, but a spiritual sanctuary of unity. And the everyday battles we fight are automatically rendered obsolete by the power of together with purpose. Can I get an amen up in here? Well, I want to be by myself. If you still want to be by yourself after today, Dig on, baby.
But I fight a lot of battles when I'm by myself. That I don't fight when we're together. Why is it? Why is it that the enemy works so hard to divide us? Why is it that the enemy works so hard to, to generate thoughts in our mind and, and influence us in ways uh, that, that are out of character for us, in, in, in ways that we just never dream? Why do you think it is that the devil, if he can, keep you sniping at somebody all the time? And maybe I need to just go on and close and let Jeremy try to I mean, let Brother Damesworth try to ride this Bronco. The reason why we feel resistance is because some of you are resisting me right now and you're saying, I don't even believe that. Do you not see? Brother David, how many times did the Lord send people out by their self? He didn't. Even Jesus Christ, you know what the first thing he did was? Surrounded himself with a group of men. In the book of Exodus... And I'm getting, I'm getting off track just a touch. You don't have to go there. I'll just read it. In the book of Exodus, Moses' father-in-law comes to him and said, The thing that you're doing is not good. You want to know what it was? Moses trying to take care of everything by himself. And he said, You're going to wear away both thou and this people that's with me for this thing is too heavy for you you're not able to perform it by yourself Moses the one whom the law is after the one whom Jesus Christ spoke to from the burning bush and said go and bring my people out and tell them I am that I am has sent you Moses who held his staff up in the Red Sea rolled back Moses a shepherd who persevered for 40 years on the backside of the desert became possibly the most hallowed and revered man maybe beside of Abraham in the Old Testament was told by his father-in-law you're not doing good because you're better together you're better together verse number 2 of Acts 14 Sorry about getting you out of, out of order there. They came and preached in the synagogue together, Paul and Barnabas. And the way they preached together was so powerful that a multitude believed. But verse number two says, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affecting them against the brethren everybody say together yeah. now I know you're probably thinking this I know you're probably thinking this somebody in here is thinking this when he gets done and he asks everybody to go to somebody else and shake their hand and hug their neck I'm gone huh you wouldn't believe the people that have told me they don't like doing that well, you can rest easy. Because guess what? I ain't going to do it. I'm not going to do it. All right? Because anybody can do that. But the unbelieving Jews, unbelief, unbelief, the, 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 the apostles are seeing great growth and great movement and, and people coming in. And many people believing. And the enemy attacks through unbelief. Same kind of thing I'm wrestling with a little bit, a little bit this morning. Unbelief. They stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds. Everybody say it starts in your mind. Made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. Come on now, you cannot tell me that you have not woke up in the morning and got ready and went to work and hated everybody you saw and you didn't even know why. Huh? You go to get gas and somebody will be in your spot. 
as if you have one. It'll make you mad. You pull up at the job and somebody will be parked in your spot and make you mad. You walk in the door and somebody wore that ugly blouse and every time they do it, it makes you mad. Huh? Are you feeling me? And you don't even know why. You get angry, you get upset, you get hurt, you get anything, and your natural reaction is build a wall and separate yourself from people. Why is that? Because the enemy knows that if we're together, he can't mess with us. Huh? Because somewhere in the middle of that group, somebody's going to be strong enough to say, Stop! Time out! Wait a minute! Brethren, another word for unity. Now, I don't know if I can say this in a way that's going to excite you. But I want you to see this. Okay? Courtney, read that for me. Read it real loud now. So there's a problem. Do I have, do, do you, are we understanding that? There, there's a problem. Somebody has come against them. With a jacked up mindset. Their minds have been made evil. They talked about them. They gossiped about them. They lied on them. Or maybe they told the truth. Doesn't say. But the unbelievers stirred up people's minds. What are they trying to do? Let, let's talk about it just a minute. Paul and Barnabas went up together to the synagogue. And there they preached and they spake. And many believed. What are they trying to do right here? Come on now. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil. Don't nobody like me. Everybody's talking about me. Everybody's being mean to me. And here I am trying to do the work of the Lord. What do they want to do? They want to shut them up. Because when they go into the church house and they preach, people believe. So the way that you get them messed up is you divide them. You get something messed up in somebody's mind. And you, you know, come on, you listen to me now. How many times have you ever thought somebody don't like you? Somebody don't want to be around you? And I'm telling you right now as your pastor, they never even thought about you. But the devil took so like a scab and began to peck at your mind until he began to divide you. And you get hard feelings against somebody and they don't even know it. Oh, I know I'm right. Sometimes I need amens because I'm not sure this ain't one of them. Look what happened. Look what happened. This excited me so much. I, I wish I had some kind of a way that when he switched from verse number 2 to verse number 3 that it would just say like Shazam in big letters and everybody would leap to their feet and begin to give a standing ovation because I want you to know, look what happened in verse number 3. Oh, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. Back me up. Back me up. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, trying to cause problems, trying to mess them up, trying to dissuade them. Verse number three. But they kept on preaching and they kept on staying there and they stayed together for a long time. Oh, somebody's got to receive this this morning. They worked together. They stayed together. They didn't let somebody's ignorant mouth stop them from doing what they're supposed to be doing. The devil came in and he tried to divide. But when they stood up and preached, they were telling the devil, you better bring something more than that. Oh, come on. You got to receive the word of the Lord this morning. You ain't quitting. You ain't backing down. You ain't going out like no punk. You got the Holy Ghost. You got the power of God within you. Come 
all now. We gotta recognize and realize the power of together with a purpose. I can't mess with you. I'm on my way to Jerusalem. Everybody say this. I'm doing a good job. Say it loud. Why is it that we feel like that's a bad thing to say? Like we're setting ourselves up. I'm just a I'm just a poor little old nobody just trying to make a difference in somebody's life. I got we we say I even hear it we're all sinners and we're we're all no good and we're all pitiful. Man, you're messing with the Lord's workmanship. You're messing with the Lord's prized creation. You think about this just for a minute. Nehemiah's building the wall. Oh. Because the people had a mind to work. That wall's been torn down for a whole lot of years. Uh, they rebuilt it in 52 days, Brother David. Uh, and Tobiah and Sanballat, uh, they started off making fun. It's in the book, read it. They started off making fun. They say if they build that wall and a fox brushes up against it, it's going to knock it down. And then they tried to come against them with a show of force. And that didn't work either. So you know what they tried next? Somebody hear this right now. You know what they tried next? Making friends. It's in the book. Read it. They came over and they said, Hey, Nehemiah, come on down here, buddy, and let's come together and talk. You know what Nehemiah said? He said, I can't come down. He said, I can't come down. You know why? I'm doing a good job. I'm doing a good work. Somebody's got to get that realization in you this morning. Uh, I got too many people counting on me. We got too much good stuff going on. We're on our way to a great explosion of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I ain't got time to come down. I ain't got to come down and listen to you make fun of me. I ain't got to come down and fight you. And I ain't got to come down and be friends with you. together with a purpose are you realizing that if we come together as a unified body you know what the devil's got to do to tear us down send a ringer in amongst us yeah he even did it to the disciples what did the Lord say have I not chosen the twelve of you and one of you is a devil didn't mean Judas was the devil it meant Judas was being used of the devil. Well, we need to make up in our minds. We have got to consecrate, dedicate in our hearts and our minds. Devil, you ain't using me. I won't be your imp. I won't be your tool. I won't be your mouthpiece. I'm doing too good. Say that one more time. I'm doing a good job. Oh, you got to be careful. I've even heard people say that. You got to be careful when you say that. You're setting yourself up for the devil. That might be. Come here, Brother Billy. Come here, Brother Joe. Come here, Brother Justin. Come on, Bub. Come on, Brother Derek. Come on, Brother Ray. Come on, Brother Anthony. Come on, Brother Cody. Come on, Brother Chris. Come on. Who did I forget? Don't y'all gather up here. You only come up here so they can look at you and be pretty. Come on up here. This is just an example. This ain't no slam on nobody that didn't go. But now you tell the devil, mess with me. Look here. Say, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. I, I'm not. We are. Huh? 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm not doing it. We are. Be seated, guys. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Come on, somebody shout it again. I'm doing a good job. I'm doing a good job. Hello. 
The only reason I called them fellas up here and not everybody else is because we just proved it this weekend. And let me tell you something, fellas. Get on board. You say, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. Them fellas can't do it all either. Huh? Huh? See, the devil going to take that and try to make a mess with it. I'm going to take that and tell you, we wasn't working for us. We was working for y'all. All of us. Look here. A long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord. <laughs> Boy, let me tell you something. The devil, he's a sneaky old rascal. But he, he ain't nothing. Hey, don't let him in. Don't let him mess with you. Don't let him mess with your mind. You're a part of the kingdom. Think about it. The Bible said he has put body members in the body in particular. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Because it does. The hand cannot say to the foot, I have no need of you. Because it does. But I'm not going to get done today. I can see that right now. That's nuts too. A long time. Man, we're going to listen to me. You listen to me well. You spawn of hell. You demon of division. I curse you and rebuke you under the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you to flee from this place. I command you to get off of our people and leave them alone in the name of Jesus. I'm aware of you. I'm calling you out. I am aware of you and I rebuke you under the authority of the name of Jesus Christ.
Let's praise the Lord. I'm doing a good job. I'm doing a good job. I'm doing a good job. I don't know if you recognize it or not, but the Holy Ghost just said you're doing a good job. The Holy Ghost just confirmed his word. Hallelujah. I'm doing a good job. Hallelujah. Long time. They kept on preaching. Long time. Stand with me. <laughs> 